Welcome back guys. You saw the title of the video. Today is the day that we are going to take a look at the bad boy, go for a ride, all that good stuff. I just need to get geared up first. All right, now that I'm ready, let's get the bike ready and head out. Bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? All right, so hopefully that song isn't stuck in y'all's heads like it is mine now that I've sung it over and over again at each of those locations. You know what, that's video C. Everyone always asks me about this bike. I never even mentioned I had it. I just, one one day it was in the vlog and everybody knew I had a Sportster and they're like, wait, hold on, what, what just happened? Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the last of the cool Harley Davidsons. Well, not exactly, but it's still the coolest one ever. It's not the last of the cool ones because they made this model in 97 also. This one is a 96 and well it's my biggest ever impulse buy. A little backstory on the bike. So back when I was finishing up school in 2012 it was you know we're gonna go for a John's moving away ride and me and a a couple of buddies rode over to like from Orlando to West Florida to the coast had lunch and while we were sitting over there I got on the on my phone and was looking for Harley dealerships because I hadn't been to a Harley dealer that I didn't work at or was trying to get a job at in a very very long time found one it was open for another hour and a half or so it was a Sunday we figured we'd hit the dealership, grab a t-shirt that, you know, didn't belong to a company that I worked for, and head home. On the ride over, I was thinking about how I really wanted a graduation present of some sort. You know, it was a week away. It was my last week in Orlando. My gloves all messed up. There we have it. I was really thinking about old, older motorcycles, some project bike. Partially because I was in early model class. That was the last class I took before graduation, which is flatheads to Evos. So it really got me amped up to like buy an old pan or shovel or, or something. I just knew I wanted something unique that a lot of people didn't have. And my original plan was to like, you know, fix it up, make it cool again, whatever, whatever bike I might find and whatever and fix that bike up and sell it for profit or whatever because I knew like we talked about last week that I wasn't going to be making a lot of money so I was kind of trying to scheme up ways to you know kind of have some some side work that wasn't interfering with you know your work as a tech because that's a big no-no well back to later on in the story when we're walking through the dealership walking around one of the guys is you know, hey John, this is what you need right here. So I come be bopping over and there's the bad boy right there. All right, I changed my mind. That's not the direction I wanted to go on the, on the road. In the video, this is exactly right. But I really want to eat some lunch too while I'm out and about because this day is gorgeous, 70 degrees outside. So I busted a, a little Anyway, I saw this bike and I got to talk to the sales guy, you know, and blah, 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 haggle, haggle, and boom, bad boy's mine. Mind you, it's Sunday. My wife is not with me. She has no idea about this. Have I mentioned that I was at Newport Ritchie Harley Davidson? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's gonna come up later because when I got home that day, I didn't actually take the bike because I was on the sports and I wasn't trading it in. So I buy the bike, but I leave on the sports room. My wife's not even in Florida anyway, so I don't have to hide it yet. That is really disturbing. I get home and I'm researching everywhere and about bad boys and this and that and start figuring out more and more information that I can find about them. And I come across a video from Tampa Harley Group on their YouTube channel. Pretty good channel, by the way. You should check it out. And they have my bike there so later on in the video we'll take a look at exactly what this bike looked like when I bought it versus 
what it looks like now. Also, I swear I do ride places other than just parks, but I want to eat a sandwich, so I'm at a park again, just like last week. So that's the backstory of how I ended up with the bad boy. It was like totally awesome and scary at the same time that I just bought a new bike at, you know, about to start a new job and all that stuff. But it was not at all the direction I would have gone in, in the bike at all. Why don't I just shift gears? I'm, I'm going way too fast for the park. It was all like all this extra chrome was on it. It was weird. So I figured, you know, obviously I wasn't going to do anything right away because it was still in, um, it was in Orlando. We're about to move and I don't want bike parts everywhere. So I just left it the way it was. I did ride, start riding it instead of the Sportster though once, because they, they brought it to me, which was totally awesome. Threw it in a trailer, brought it to me like Tuesday or Wednesday of the week that I graduated, whatever it was. I just, I instantly was like, okay, I gotta change this, 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 and that. You know how it is when you get a new bike, especially a used one that already has a bunch of accessories on it that you don't like. Well, my first ride out, it got hot. Probably the first time, like, I don't blame uh, Newport Richie Harley at all for this because they probably didn't ride it until it got hot um, But the spring plate within the clutch just like I had to replace on my Sportster. Yeah 95 to 97 Evos have the same thing all the big twins also Horrible design if you ride at all hard if you just like You know cruise like a old grandpa then it's probably it'll work out great but that is not how I ride so well, and apparently not the previous owner either, for that matter. Damn prison details up here at my freaking lunch spot. Let's find a different picnic table. So on the move back from Orlando to Columbus, I uh, obviously have to tell my wife at some point about this, and I don't know. I, she probably didn't talk to me for about two weeks after that. So if you have any interest in, like, getting your wife off your case just go buy a new motorcycle swear to god she won't talk to you for a long time really mean looks you are gonna have to put up with that but nagging ceases to exist what is that saying we used to say it all the time down there it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission yes 100 percent also disregard everything i just said horrible idea it was just it was just really bad back to that clutch pack thing that was the first thing i did it happened once I was back in Columbus though, pulled the primary off, fixed the basket and the hub and dropped the new clutch back in it and this and that. And that was kind of it for a while. I knew that handlebars were coming up, but I didn't really have the money for it, you know, new tech pay and all that. So I just pulled a bunch of crap off. As a matter of fact, let's check out the bike, how it used to look, and we'll check out how the bike looks now while I find a place to eat. Those swing arm bags are super dope, by the way. They're, I mean, you can't fit a ton of stuff in them, but it's really convenient to be able to just stick like a few things in there. As you can see, the previous owner was, well, his taste was a bit different than mine, but I mean, it was the 90s too, man. Chrome was cool and black was lame. That's why the bad boy didn't sell well. It's basically a regular FX Springer, FX being skinny front tire. It's exactly the same thing, except, you know, different paint and stuff, but black, Springer front end, not a chrome one, and a black oil tank instead of a chrome one. Um, 
I mean, now it looks different, but uh, yeah. I need my sandwich. And I'll tell you like some brands of what I've got on there and all that. Even I mean, you already saw it now, but yeah, that'll be, that'll be cool. I tracked down these Hanna bars from Road 6 Customs. They were the look I wanted. See the dimensions on the Springer knurled ends. They're four and a half inches, not three and a half. So it's important to get Springer specific bars. So once I found them, I liked all the dimensions, measured the height, you know, like bar ends. Well, I got the bars, but I wasn't ready yet because um, like my five tips to easy Hanna bar install, I went ahead and I got a lot of this switch housings and stuff, they're takeoff from my Sportster. Um, the master cylinder I had to get, but it was take off, it was damaged. Well, I sent all that to paint. You might notice it's all like high gloss paint instead of like the semi gloss powder coat that is stock. I wanted some black and chrome, so you know, hardware, switch caps, master cylinder cover. I bought the mirrors at that time, they're a tribal tribal collection that I think is discontinued now and I shot for them underneath the bar but you don't get the right like angle out of them so the only one the one that works the best is stock mirrors on the 48 they're designed to be underneath the handlebar which means like the ball and ramp assembly or not really ramp but like the ball assembly that's on the end of the smear stem it works better for your range where these like I couldn't get them high enough I basically just stare at the ground right about there that's no good apparently I left my swing arm bag open again as usual to pull over and change that see where the buckle smacks the crap out of everything yeah that is a downside to the swing arm bag at some point I bought some new flush mount gas caps off Amazon this is actually two tanks on the old soft tails so I found some crappy and I mean crappy caps off of Amazon for like $25 they leak like hell they're horrible um, I, they do not come highly recommended by any means but the stock chrome caps were well chrome and they rattled really bad specifically the left one it's like left hand thread so you can't like just get a new cat it's it's a pain it's specific to the left side tank i run a mustang seat on my sportster and really like it so when it got time to pick out a seat for this one it was an easy choice to go mustang they also have this pouch which the bike had the original studded like almost brown looking one before well i got used to having a pouch and i needed tank trim and the stock one is obsolete of course because it's an old bike and blah 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 so well I just got the Mustang version worked out pretty good keep my vape in there now and used to keep a pack of cigarettes in there before but whatever motorcycle the tail lamp assembly is actually some like all-in-one unit it's two lights they're both brake lights and then there's a left turn signal and a right turn signal all like within the bobtail fender which is cool because it cleans up the back end a ton it's probably not DOT approved as a matter of fact I think it's not I think the website said so Cycle Visions I believe is who makes it it came with a load equalizer and it was plug and play so it was cool <laughs> yeah and I bought that unit because the right rear turn signal wasn't working the the socket had busted out of the mini bullet, like super, super mini bullets. You can barely see it in the first place. So it didn't have a good ground. It like randomly worked if it was like rattling against the housing, it's such a pain. Well, I just rolled with that, used hand signals until one time I just about got rear-ended, like horns honking, tires screeching, oh my gosh. It's also why I had to get a new seat because I actually had to pull the stock one right out of my butthole after that happened. You noticed in there the 80 spoke front wheel was already on the bike when I got it, but I've always really wanted like an 80 spoke, 80 twisted spokes with black hub and black rim. I think that would look totally sick. Carry on my chrome and black theme that I have going. Do the rear the same way, but money. The pipes, it had drag pipes on it at first and 
well I mentioned in the comments a lot but never like in a video that straight pipes or removing the baffles from your exhaust is like a performance killer what happens is baffles create back pressure and back pressure is bottom end torque right you get rid of that you have no back pressure then you have no bottom end torque and well that's like all these engines make is bottom end torque so to put straight pipes on it yeah it's allowed like i used to feel like i ripped around everywhere on this thing because as soon as i opened the throttle it's just like rah, 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 rah. well yeah and, and but i wasn't actually going anywhere the speedo was like i don't want to go up this is a scratched two and a one that the owner replaced because he had like dropped his bike or something it wasn't even really that bad but he didn't want it he replaced it and well since he didn't want it i knew a guy that would use it so bought some heat wrap some black paint a couple of sanding discs later and i got me a dope sauce exhaust pipe also have a daymaker headlight and custom dynamics turn signals why did i do custom dynamics turn signals the rear lighting already came with a load equalizer that i needed to make all that work without the turn signals flashing double double time for the most part though that's it everything else was just stuff i took off to make it different it's poor man's customization right there there's still a ton of stuff i want to do to this bike namely get the engine blacked out it, the base gaskets leak like all get out evo life kind of been putting it off because it's gonna be expensive i know i don't want to fix the base gaskets because i want everything to be blacked out and all that stuff so it's just just time it is too hot out there if you're not moving with the it's good motorcycle riding weather it's not good standing in your driveway weather also i think i have a caffeine problem so why is the bad boy the coolest bike that harley ever made well pretty simple actually in my opinion springer front end that's like classic old school harley right i don't know it's just like super classic looking like you can make bikes look old school all you want but you know in design aspects the heritage soft tail and stuff they look old school i like them for that reason but dude nothing beats a springer front end that's like as old school as it gets carbureted evo motor dude nothing sounds that good my comment sections jam up with guys like how can i make my new m8 sound like my old bike and i want the lope and da, 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 da. dude you can't it's not carbureted evo simple as that is it the best bike harley ever made nah not really <laughs> evo's 80 inches as a matter of fact i think it's the only engine that harley has ever made that they never made two variations of the engine size they never upgraded it. It came out as an 80 inch. They discontinued it as an 80 inch. They're not fast. I mean, they can be built up to be fast, but generally the displacement just isn't there for the weight of the bike, especially when you put a Springer front end on it. My Sportster, way quicker and faster than that thing. Over four grand, it's like miserable. It just like rattles you to death. Mirrors come loose all the time. Center console like rattle up where the but there is no feeling like riding that bike just all there is to it i don't know i don't feel yeah can't explain it you just gotta you just understand it or you don't it's just all there is to it you guys are probably wondering about that whole i was gonna sell it thing i mean i already thought it was a cool bike but you know i pull up somewhere on the sportster and people are like oh yeah a nice bike whatever you know that's what they say to like i mean i kind of wonder if you can pull up on a moped and people be like hey nice bike but the bad boy everybody has a story about the bad boy People walk up to you and be like, oh man, I had one of those, I should have never gotten rid of it. Or, you know, oh, my brother had one. Or it, There's a story behind the bad boy somehow. I think because they didn't make very many of them or something. But it's a cool bike. Head turner. People love it. I love it. Hope you love it too. And I hope you like this video. So you should definitely give it a big dirty thumbs up. And if you have any questions about stuff like you know just throw them in the comments i like to hang out in there particularly right after i post the video so like all night tonight wednesday nights that's usually when i'm there no promises after that if you want to see more content like this hit the subscribe button tap that bell notification so you know when i'm uploading and i'm pretty sure next week we'll be back in the shop if my plans for videos work out the way they're supposed to and otherwise i'll catch you guys in the next one